This one is peat characteristics. Peat moss has numerous characteristics that make it ideal as the main ingredient for growing substrates. By main ingredient, even for myself, when I used to do research, uh, one, of the, one of the components basically has to be the backbone uh, and uh, to provide integrity. Uh, it's not that all the components should pr provide integrity, but you have to start with ground zero, and ground zero, as far as I'm concerned, is, is good quality peat. However, not all peat moss is the same. Berger recognizes this, takes extra steps to optimize its production and enhance these characteristics, making sure it pro its products are always uniform and of the highest quality. When we say that all peat moss is not the same, we can either say it's different in classifications, whether it be a, a sedge peat or a sphagnum peat, or we can even say that a sphagnum peat, not all of them are all the same because we will be talking about decomposition. Okay, a good surface active peat that has hardly any decomposition has the optimum characteristics that we talk about as far as porosity and stability and integrity. But the minute the peat starts to decompose and get smaller in particle size and lose some of its original structure, then it becomes less of a good quality peat, okay? Several characteristics of peat will be discussed. Peat classification, peat chemical characteristics, and peat physical characteristics. What is peat? Product formed by the accumulation of fossilization of vegetative debris by microorganisms over a long period of time in an environment saturated with water and with low oxygen. So basically, a peat bog, until you go in there and put the ditches in to remove the water, it's basically very slow anaerobic decomposition. Without the oxygen, it's a very slow process. So it kind of holds its integrity. And so the minute we put the ditches in, for the water to go out and to start harvesting, it's just that upper half inch layer to an inch that dries on a daily basis that we harvest, but its integrity starts to change because it's starting to actually decompose under aerobic conditions. So it's going to speed up its decomposition rate, okay? A peat bog is an intermediate step towards the formation of coal, process that takes a few millennia. I guess a little bit of added information. Peat classification, we have botanical composition and we have degree of uh, decomposition. Sphagnum peat, reed, reed sedge peat and hyphen peat. They call these plastic peats uh, basically because uh, when they do decompose in that, like I don't know if you're ever, you're aware of like sedge peat, how it's black and mucky and it's plastic, it even feels plasticky, and it shines on you, okay? Whereas elastic peat, meaning that it's gonna give you the give and take, it can be compressed and decompressed, it's got a good value to it, and it's basically because of the structure, and we'll be seeing that structure. Berger uses only high quality sphagnum peat moss, okay? So we're not even talking reed sedge, or hype them. One example of a, uh, a sedge peat or a carex peat would be um, the original Michigan backto peat, that black heavy peat. That would be what would be considered a reed sedge or a carex peat. Re rate of decomposition, as it gets deeper, peat is more decomposed and particles are smaller. So what we're targeting is always I use the term surface active peat, okay? And the deeper we go, the more decomposed it is, we get into black peat. So all the good quality of, uh, of, a, of a high percent of aeration and a high percent porosity, a high CEC, capability to hold onto nutrient. That's very good up here, but as we go down here, then it becomes, the, the quality's totally, dis well, they actually do disappear. They, they're not there for a benefit, okay? Now, that's not to say, as you can see, I'm talking about a profile that goes from top to bottom. 
at Berger understand that if you ever been to some of the bogs before, like virgin bogs, they're actually undulating. There's high parts, low parts, little lakes, deep lakes and that. Where Von Post used to think that H1 or the best is always on the top. The thing is, is that if you go into a peat bog and you start cutting and cutting and cutting, you're all, some of the areas are gonna be at this, at the top of the bog, and some will be at the bottom. So at Berger, in order to classify properly, we actually have to go in there and, and we use, actually use like a thermal imagery to gives off, gives off more of a red biological glow. So we know which ones are decomposed and least decomposed. So that then, because if you go in and start just saying, let's take a harvester, and I think you're all familiar with the types of vacuum harvesting. So when you go across 180 uh, acres, it doesn't mean that day one, you're starting at what we call H1 or C1. You could be getting into some C2, C3, C4. We've mapped all that. That's how it's actually harvested. Each bog or each bag then is on it, we'll say C1 or C2, C3, C4, because then we know which peats we need to blend or use for specific types of mixes that we make. Okay, so it's not, so we're not going in there and randomly just saying, okay, let's take all this peat and let's make one type of mix with it. Okay. More fibers, small particles. Berger optimizes its harvest to maximize the content of fibers in its product. So this is what we're aiming for, is more fiber, okay? That's not to say that we're gonna use some small particles because we might have a mix where we want to retain more water than, than a normal mix. So we'll put in some of the smaller particle, which is, has more humic acid in it, more sticky, and, 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 and does retain more water, okay? So it'll be a blend. Low pH, three to four. The more it decomposes, the more it becomes neutral, or so the more it decomposes, the more the pH rises, okay? To increase the pH to an optimal range, lime is added to the growing media. Low pH, there's your peat moss. There's the standard pH of a mix. While most manufacturers use only one type. So most manufacturers will use basically dolomitic. Now they do use gypsum, but I think we all know that gypsum is not, it's not a lime that changes the pH. The gypsum is in there because they're adding calcium and sulfate, okay? We're adding our calcium in this form, and then dolomitic we know also adds magnesium, okay? So we do do two, and I think I explained this morning, the calcitic is super fine, and it's to re reach our seven day equilibrium. Then after that, we're relying on the residual action of dolomitic lime. Chemical characteristics, we know that peat is hydrophobic. It doesn't like water at all, it repels it. And I should say, very young peat will repel peat, uh, water even more than what I called that dark black humic peat. Because once the humic acid gets in there, it creates a stickiness. Once dry, peat is hydrophobic, so it's gonna repel the water. To improve wettability, a wetting agent is added during the growing media production. So, as you can see, good water distribution. So you, you want a mix that's going to retain moisture, but it's gonna get rid of all excess free water. That's what they just demonstrated. So we have good water distribution because really all we want the roots to do is we want the roots to be hunting for uh, this blue film of water. We don't ever want to get into a saturated condition. If that pot was to stay totally saturated and all this water was blocked in here, uh, say, say it was to stay saturated for three to four hours, five hours, the thing is, is that it's inciting pythium. Pythium looks for lack of oxygen. So the, fat, the best thing we can do is let's make a mix where we're gonna retain moisture, get rid of the excess water, so that we get an oxygen back in to deter the movement of pythium, okay? So if we don't have the proper wetting agent in there, then we basically have channeling. So all the water you put in is finding the least path of resistance, leaving, so that then the roots don't really have much 
root surface area to accomplish any water uptake. Okay. Other characteristics, a low EC, so soluble salt content, low, very low nutrient content, easily adjustable. Again, we're dealing with a surface active peat, and you're going to see in the slides where the surface active peat has a very good attraction to, to minerals and nutrients. It has a high CEC. High organic matter, excellent cation exchange capacity. Again, just the capacity to hold on for the, 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 the media itself to hold on to nutrient, a nutrient reserve in between watering and irrigation. Okay. Here's other characteristics, but it, again, it's showing you that there's a lot of negative, like say, cation or anion exchange going between these, and basically, this would be the reserve until the next watering or feeding. Okay. And again, it's not to say that all of these are all going to be attracted at the same time. I don't want to go into much more chemistry in that, but understand that some will have a, a stronger attraction than other, uh, other elements. So, for instance, well, they don't even show it in here. That's probably why. <clears throat> Phosphorus in a peat light mix has a, uh, is one of the first to be leached through. There's not a lot of site, doesn't have a strong uh, activity to, to, to the bonding sites. So you start looking at the ones that are strong and some are laying down. So, so it's not that if I feed a 20 that I'm going to get 200 parts N, 100 part phosphorus, and 100 part potassium all sticking in there. The weaker ones are going to, if the sites are already, already filled, a lot of the nutrient can actually go through. Okay. So what you're counting on then is the root development. And remember, I think I've talked before, but a root development, I don't mean the anchor roots, I mean the white hairy fiber roots. Those small fiber roots, they're what holds on to 95% of the nutrients coming through the root zone. So the more I can increase the root surface area with a lot of very good, what we call fibrous or hairy root system, I increase the root surface area by up to 30% in that pot. So what I'm talking about here then is good water management practices, receiving a good mix with good aeration and porosity to produce that, 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 that factory of root hairs that's going to penetrate for you. Berger performs several tests on peat moss to verify and confirm that it's always within our strict quality standards. And I think those of you this morning, you saw the, F, the factory inspection report, that goes on on a regular basis. Thanks to our precise traceability system, the exact characteristics of the peat used in our growing media are reviewed before each production and the necessary adjustments are made. Um, every bag that goes out, every format goes out, you know, there's a large barcode on it, and that barcode then tells us the day that it was actually harvested, how many days the peat was stored, then what day it went into production, and, and gives you all the quality control. Okay. Particle size, very important, critical importance. It has a direct impact on porosity and water retention. So as you can see, if we have a mixture with large particles, we're automatically going to retain 35% of the air after excess water is gone. And we still have a water holding, just a water holding capacity of 16%. Go back to that picture where you saw that the particles just were lying surrounded by water, that's what you want, okay? Whereas we get into a very small particle size, you can see that, see how much air af after it's been drained. Now this is after we gave it water and it's been drained, it's holding only 12% air, but it's gonna hold on to 82% water. The problem is, middle of the winter, not a lot of sunlight, not a lot of air movement, not a lot of transpiration for the water, the excess water to, be, to, to leave the, the, the media you're in trouble, okay? So you want your mix, and you want the characteristics of the peat to do this type of work for you, whether it be good weather or bad weather. Bourget and most American peat producers use the number 10 sieve to characterize the particle size. So we do about, like, we'll do a 3-8 sieve, then we do a, a, a 10, a 20, a 50, 100, and a 200, and then a pan at the bottom. 
<coughs> what we're looking at all the time is what percent is pertained on that number 10. And the higher percent on that retained on there increases your aeration, increases your porosity and your drainage. Because you don't want to be using too fine of a mix where the only band-aid you're going to be using is adding perlite for the drainage. When I went back to talking about the main component being the backbone of the structure, I want that peat moss and it, its characteristics and its physical nature and its mesh size, I want it to do a great deal of that aeration and prosody for me. If I have to rely on perlite or lots of perlite, I'm not going to accomplish the same thing. Particle size is influenced by, again, we saw the classification, decomposition rate, fog management, harvesting method, vacuum versus block cut. We're all familiar with vacuum versus block cut. Okay, so in Europe, everyone's always talking block cut. And yes, the block cut is, once it dries, is gonna perform very long fibers, sometimes too long of a fiber. Uh, mixes that are made, companies will now send a a plunger to put on the potting line because it's, it's so dense and, and so fibrous that when you put it in the six inch pot, it rises. So you gotta make sure it goes back down. It's got good aeration, good frosting in that, but the thing is, is I think you also understand that uh, a lot of the countries have already lost up to one third. Some of Ireland has lost 70% of its bog lands because see, when you go this deep, you're past the point of no return of trying to then reestablish young sphagnum peat to grow again. Okay. This is how it's harvested in North America. Basically, uh, and remember the ditches I talked about to always get keep the excess water out. That doesn't mean that this whole layer is dried. It means that at least it's drying down and it's always allowing, as long as there's no rain for a period of time, it's allowing that first half inch to inch to actually be harvested. So. A tractor goes in with the tine, breaks up the peat, just that first half inch. One day, for a day it's dried, and then, so this vehicle is just vacuuming. What he's vacuuming is about, about that half inch at a time. That's all he's vacuuming, okay? Okay, sieving method. So, I guess this is just a, it's a picture to show all the different sieves and to, to, to how do you say, to really get the production on a busy day, we have to do a lot of sieving, okay? And it's not that, um, the thing is, is that it's on a machine to make sure that every sieve is only shaken a certain amount of times and then stopped, so that you're getting more of a, a good idea as opposed to manually shaking it and not knowing what you've done. So, so it's the same oscillation, the same vibration to try to get, get an idea. Okay, storage. Covered or uncovered, piled versus packaged, handling in general. There's always a question of covered versus uncovered, piled versus packaged. In the past, we know that in the middle of the summer when you're harvesting peat, the minute that pile that the guy's putting in a pile waiting for the tractor to take away, the minute that pile gets above 60 to 65 degrees, what happens is that naturally the coarse peat that you just put in that pile is gonna start breaking down more. So they monitor the temperature as to know if it's getting too hot, then they will bring it in out of the field and they will put it into our large, I don't know if anyone's familiar with our large sky format, but they put them into big towers, compress them, wrap them, so at least we're stopping the heat buildup, we're removing the oxygen and we're making it more of a stable product right from the get-go to, to, try to try to maintain that stability until we can use it, okay? Blending for consistency. Peak characteristics may vary from one harvesting site to another. Uh, to ensure consistency, Breger uses blending at several levels during the harvest, between harvesting zones on the same site. Like I'd mentioned, the reason why they have to now do that is that they do realize that we're not always gonna be at that same surface active level at all the bogs. It all, it all changes because of the the undulation and movement uh, uh, and different uh, 
dips, little lake structures, whatever is in the bog prior to us going in there. During initial packaging between nearby sites, during growing media production between several sites, no matter when a product is manufactured, the Breguet quality control system ensures that the products from different factories follow the same strict standards and have the same characteristics. When we've set our standards that say, for instance, uh, 15 to 20% aeration, 90 to 95% porosity, um, uh, so much what we call wettability of the peat, all of those, doesn't matter what we blend, they have to meet those same specs. Doesn't matter what bog, what site it came from, and so on that factory inspection report, if it doesn't meet it, a yellow flag goes up. And as you see, we, we reprocess it or, or re, uh, rename it if it'll fit into another mix that we're using. Berger uses a star green screen to sieve. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but these are just like, they're, they're rolling rubber, little rubber tongues, okay? The faster you roll, the more sticks it helps keep out. But the faster you roll, the more particle is broken down, okay? So we always have to understand that if this is for a coarse mix and we want a larger particle size, the rollers are gonna slow down and a certain amount of sticks, or what we call, what, what is referred to as sticks is that it's all the roots that were in that bog prior to us harvesting. So when it dries up, people refer to them as that I have sticks in my mix, okay? The sticks are in there in a certain percent or certain amount of grams of sticks, we only allow per production, okay? But if someone says, Brian, I want, I want, I want a number 40 on the number 10, number 45, then we know that we're hoping or we're gonna say, are you using large containers? Because that'll be the ideal mix for you to use, but understand if you were to take that and put it in a little three inch container or smaller, like a 72, you're gonna be complaining about these little three quarter inch sticks sticking in there. So in order to remove the sticks to someone's ideas is the fact that then they have to understand that the, the peat is gonna become finer, okay? Sticks and roots are removed at the same time. Does minimal damage to the peat fiber because we went with the rubber system, the, the rubber tongs. The system ensures that the Berger peat has consistent particle size and quality. Other characteristics, outstanding water retention. Again, that's good surface active peat, okay. I love these pictures only because surface active peat, like I say, even though we harvest it, under magnet, if I was to rehydrate it to its, its original water content, you'll look at it and you can actually see that it's still cylindrical. So through that peat, it's still cylindrical to allow water and to trap air, okay? Here's what, here, here, here is, you can see these walls, a higher magnification of these walls, they're called hyaline cells. All they're there for is structure. As long as we don't break up too many of those hyaline cells or those walls, that, that, that retains the structure and integrity of the peat. So we could try to compress it and try to ruin it, and we do much less damage. If we rehydrate it, it retains them. So then let's, let's look at nearly 600 magnification. There's your hyaline cells. cells. There's your holes to take in air. This is the material that absorbs the water. So the, the nice thing is, is that good surface active peat is as much water as it's holding, it's holding as much oxygen. But then as we decompose the peat, the integrity of these starts to break down, the integrity of this breaks down, they all start to become squashed. We don't have the same quality, okay? Other characteristics, contaminant free, pathogens, insects, and weeds presence of beneficial organisms. The beneficial organisms, the populations will definitely be concentrated at the top part where there's more oxygen available, okay? And so that we, we don't go deep, not just because it's decomposed, but we can't really say there's much benefit, okay? Decomposes real slowly, which is what we want. 
because it is, say for instance, you're getting into an 18 month production of, of poinsettia stock or something, okay. Low density for transport. We don't wanna be selling you 15% water, transporting you the cost of 15% water. Can be compressed and expanded easily. Again, another good feature. <coughs> Peat moss is like a blank canvas and can be adjusted to the specific needs of growers. However, not all peat is the same as manufacturers will have a different influence on its characteristics. Berger has developed an efficient harvesting and storage system to enhance these characteristics and optimize the quality of its products. 